Just six years ago before PSR, the railroads were operating with a robust workforce and an ample supply of locomotives and equipment. They were enjoying the fruits of the safest, most productive era in railroading history, which was born and brought by the two-person crew. My number one priority is the safety of my members, and my second priority is job security for them. These priorities have been jeopardized by the railroad's PSR initiatives, which in turn are having subsequent dire effect on the shippers we serve. And now, because of PSR, only two choices exist for rail labor, work or be fired. The railroads have a problem. They have created a dangerous, hostile work environment under PSR that no one wants to work under. We made changes to provide greater flexibility in our program for our employees. I actually currently have an investigation for a single mother who under the old policy of before high biz, she was fine. She never had any problems at all. Well, she is a single mother with, I guess you'd say a standard custody situation. And um, now she's basically on her last leg before getting fired for high biz. She's a great conductor. I mean, an outstanding conductor that works between Fort Worth and Oklahoma City. In fact, we're seeing less discipline with this new policy. We are fighting for her job right now. We will continue to engage with our employees as they transition through this. Railroading is not a hard concept. It takes three things to railroad, power, crew, and rail. That's it. Something to pull it, somebody to drive it, something to run on. You give those three things, we can run all day long. Essentially, the, the dollars that we generate, that we invest in ourselves, come first. So the locomotives that I described, uh, the chassis that I described, we will invest in that first, in ourselves first. After that, um, we will pay a dividend. We also um, feel, you know, we, we, we are, you know, our investors are interested in that as well. And then if there's anything left, it goes to share buybacks because our customers own the company. You want an answer? Let us, run the trains, let us run the trains of one employee and the, the, the issue is solved. Let us run the trains of one employee. Let us run the trains of one employee. Almost every shipment made by an NGFA member via rail will be used for either human food, animal food, or fuel production in the domestic and international markets. We have reports of trains sitting for more than 10 days. The unreliable service has, has an impact not only on Cargill, but also every piece of the supply chain from the producer all the way to the consumer. Further delays could not only impact our industry, but could ultimately increase fuel costs for American drivers. Shippers often do not have enough cars to ship the product volumes that need to move. This forces shippers and producers to curtail production, raises costs, and everyone, everyone except, of course, the rail industry, which is doing quite well. It's not a surprise that the National Grain and Feed Association filed a complaint, and it is not a surprise that the other shippers here today have followed suit. PSR has not only restricted the number of locomotives and employees in service, but it has also limited the shipments available to the customers and services. The railroads are serious about fixing their crew shortage issues. They would be at the national negotiating table. Truth is, employees are leaving the industry faster than the railroads can hire. COVID provided the cover for more cuts to be made and they took it. Both my members and the shippers deserve fair treatment and better conditions to fix this alarming situation we find ourselves in. Safe and efficient train operations takes time and investment. Two things PSR does not allow. And NS has gone from 2.29 in 2010 to 3.54 in 2021. That's a 54% increase in train accidents per million miles. And virtually all of that increase started in 2019, which is when PSR started. So. I don't know if the two are related, 
but the numbers don't look good on the safety side. Increased train lengths have slowed the infrastructure. Average time spent working at terminals have increased. We operate now with one locomotive. We might have three in our consist, but we're only allowed to run one locomotive. This is like hooking up a 28 foot camper to a Toyota Prius and trying to drive to Colorado. If you talk to our ops folks about their experience with the railroads during this time, I don't think you'd hear the word transparency. I think you'd hear frustration, lack of accountability, and then all the time that they've spent, you know, sending emails, making phone calls, and then also scheduling these loads to keep our breweries running. I hope that the uh, railroads are paying close attention. Um, but if you think this board is under some pressure to meet this problem, if America runs out of beer, Katie, bar the door. Plant shutdowns as a result of inadequate rail service have become a fairly common occurrence recently. I mean, you've heard from witnesses earlier saying that they're losing money, they're shutting down production, and yet and still you're saying that, that you're, you're giving money back to your customers. Well, some of those customers aren't your investors. They're not your shareholders. This is, I think, the most serious issue before the board uh, uh, in, in quite some time. The impacts of PSR on ILTA members are significantly impacting the national supply chain, which you've heard today, especially for liquid commodities such as gasoline, ethanol, and other liquid products. This is the price of bread going up. This is ethanol not being mixed with gasoline and the price, prices are high at the pump. 200 years, we sit there and we haul something from point A to point B and somebody pays us to do that. We're not on track. We're not doing that anymore. Please help us get back on track. It's hard for me to see that as rhetoric when they're talking about what they're enduring and going through right now. Before we meet again, I'd like to invite one of the people in the C-suites here, contact these guys, meet them in the yard, and you physically watch them what they're going through.